Something I really like in boating is searching for the meaning that lies behind the name of the shipyards. Today I'm on board the Scanner NV 1200 HT. In my research, I discovered that the scanner was a tool used during World War II to find the best frequency for transmitting sensitive data. In short, a constant search to arrive at the best possibility. Well, this is what lies behind its name. Now it's my turn to test it. Let's get started. Welcome to the boat show. Questo è the boat show. Those who follow us know that this inflatable is not new to me. I've already navigated this hull by Donato Montemitro, the Scanner NV 1200 HT. But here is a small, huge difference. At the stern, it's equipped with two outboard engines. This means that the hull, weight distribution and weight centering are different, as it is the propulsive thrust point. But in short, with all these variations, will their ongoing quest for perfection have paid off? In the meantime, let's get to know it. At the stern, there are two platforms that surround the housing of the outboard engines. With its maximum motorization, that being three 450 horsepower engines, the platforms must be smaller to make room for the engines. On the left platform, there is a retractable ladder. There is a wide central sun deck with a fold-down backrest. Inside, there's a lot of storage space, divided into two sectors for optimal organization. Here, on the inboard version, would be the engine room. The dinette table is foldable and electric. When closed, its profile is thin, which makes it easy for all eight possible guests to enter and exit the seats. This one can be converted into a forward seating bench, and right in front of it, there's a multifunctional unit with a sink and the possibility to install hobs. A large drawer refrigerator is located down here. From the outside, the Scanner MV1200 HT is unmistakably an inflatable boat, but let's step inside. Does it still unmistakably look like an inflatable? From here, you can see the tubelers, because Scanner, or better yet, Donato Montemitro, was one of the first to use fiberglass as an aesthetic complement aboard an inflatable. By doing so, the bulwark can be high, without depending on the tube's diameter. This way, they can safely host all passengers. The flooring from the stern platforms to the pilot station has been developed on one level. A second level, on the other hand, is that which runs from the forward area to the aft end of the stringer. To connect the two levels, there are three small steps. At the bow, the sun deck cushioning almost immediately develops along the forward lines of the formwork, which, as it extends, in turn, merge with those of the hardtop. The heights, sought in the large forward volumes and significant depth of the keel, allow for truly remarkable below-deck spaces. In the bow, the owner's quarters are spacious, illuminated by the openings on the ceiling. The hallway, which connects directly to the forward area, features settee, seating and two different levels of flooring. The bathroom is refined and has a separate shower stall. Navigating on a lake gives a particular feeling to those who are not used to it, because when it is calm, it's really flat. So there are the best possible conditions to test something in particular. 
not the seaworthiness, which is better tested on the sea, but actually the balance and stability of the hull. And this is exactly what I want to test about the outboard scanner NV1200 HT. In fact, having shifted the weights, something has changed. In the version with stern drives, we are equipped with two V8 430 horsepower engines by Volvo. Their dry weight per engine was 439 kilograms. This outboard version instead is equipped with two 425 horsepower XTO engines by Yamaha. Each engine's dry weight is 442 kilograms, so there is a minimal difference in weight. The stern drive version has the engines in the aft locker, so the center of gravity is lower and the weight is higher. While it's obvious that outboard engines are heavier and rest entirely on the transom, To mount the outboards, the brackets were molded inside the hull, not applied later. As a result, the hull is slightly longer than the stern drive version. After talking about the differences between the stern drive and outboard versions, I expect that Scanner, in its constant quest for perfection, has considered what small modifications were needed to be able to get the rib to balance perfectly, even with this type of motorization. To know if they have done it, there are two ways. The first is to talk to the engineer and look at all the plans, comparing them in a scientific way. It would be a very long process. The second way, on the other hand, is much easier. Put myself at the helm, close my eyes, start navigating and feel the hull. Actually, with 850 horsepower aft, it's better to keep them open. Let's start cruising at 25 knots with 3,600 RPM and a fuel consumption of 98 litres per hour. The hull of this model has been designed by Donato Montemitro. At the bow, it's very thin, so as to cleave through the waves, and the vertex is almost vertical. There are two chines, no step, and a dead rise of 24 degrees aft. What do I expect? When it veers, it leans in a very sporty way. Let's push it to 30 knots. At 4,300 RPM, we consume 150 litres per hour. I now veer to port. It's true that it's taking us long, but we can feel the boat going down, leaning on the tubular. I tighten my turn. Wow, what a wonderful veer. I repeat, what a wonderful veer. It seems I'm steering a train on its tracks. There are no waves, the only ones are mine, and I'm trying to go through them. I want to feel how smooth this hull is. It's wonderful. Another big difference, maybe the most obvious one, between the stern drive and outboard motorization is that we can see the engines, and they are very beautiful. Plus, listen to how they roar. Let's start revving them up. We're at 5,200 RPM, 38 knots, and consumption is 263 litres per hour. The shipyard claims that with this motorization, I will be able to reach and exceed 45 knots. So today, as always, I have two goals. The first one is to reach them, and the second one is to top them. Let's open the gas completely. 5,500 RPM, trim in the lower position, 41.6 knots and 291 litres per hour.
Aumento il trim, lo alzo. I increase the trim by raising it. The tip raises too and the inflatable becomes lighter. The XTO are starting to roar out loud at 5,700 RPM at a speed of 45 knots. So the first goal is achieved. We are consuming 305 litres per hour. I increase the trim. Aumento il trim. 6,100 giri per minuto. 6,100 RPM. The maximum speed is 47.1 knots for the consumption of 322.3 litres per hour. In short, I have really tested the Scanner MV1200 HT in every condition, sea, lake, stern drive and outboard motorization. And I must say that the balance and seaworthiness are always impeccable. What doesn't change? The joy of navigating on it.